Okay, so you're interested in the UN's sustainable development goals. Right. A ambitious stuff. Yeah. But, you know, you're not just here for like a quick summary. You want to know how these goals actually play out in the real world. Mm. And that's what we're doing today. We're diving into this really interesting book, Everyday SDG Narratives from the Ground. <laughs> it's full of stories about, you know, just regular people in Malaysia who are taking these SDGs and actually turning them into action. Yeah. You know, what I found so interesting about this book is that it doesn't focus on theory. Yeah. It focuses on the lived experiences of people. Exactly. It's how individuals and communities are, you know, grappling with these huge global challenges, but on a day to day basis. And it's actually amazing to see, like, how much of an impact just one person can make. Mm -hmm. Like, take Stephen Chow, for example. OK. This guy, he lives with cerebral palsy. Wow. But he still went on to found an organization in Taiping. And this organization supports some of the, you know, m most vulnerable people in his community. That's amazing. It really makes you think, you know, like what's possible if we don't let our limitations define us. It's true. And and Stephen's story, it goes beyond just overcoming a challenge, right? Yeah. It's how he's using this framework, the SDGs, as like a tool. Right. To empower himself and others. Mm -hmm. He saw a need. He saw a way to make things better. And he just went for it. Exactly. And that that's really what the STDs are all about, you know. Absolutely. Taking action. Yeah. And speaking of people who are, you know, taking action and being courageous, the book also talks about this guy, Zahid Alam. He's a refugee who lives in Penang. And, you know, he doesn't just sit back. He's become a really powerful advocate for his community, talking about the difficulties they face every day and really fighting for their rights. You know, I think Zahid's story brings up a really, really important point about the SDGs. If we want to see real change, then we have to understand what it's like to walk in other people's shoes. Yeah. We have to understand especially the experiences of people who are often ignored. Right. His story reminds us that including everyone, it's not about you know just checking a box. It's about making sure everyone has an equal opportunity to shape their own future. Exactly. And you know, it's really cool. It's seeing how these like individual stories can grow into these big movements for change. Right. Like, you know, there's this organization, KMM. Right. They started out pretty small, but they've gotten kind of big, actually. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of work in Taiping and Samangal. They tackle things like poverty by helping people, you know, earn an income. Mm -hmm. And they do digital skills training, too, which is, you know, so important these days. It is. Yeah. KMM is a great example of how much change can happen when the community is the one driving it. That's so true. It's all about figuring out what the local needs are and then coming up with solutions from within. Yeah. Rather than, you know, waiting for someone else to swoop in and fix things. Exactly. This kind of like grassroots thing, it's way more effective over time, don't you think? A hundred percent. And it makes it like way more sustainable too. You know, absolutely. And this whole thing about inclusivity, right? Like making sure that when there's progress, everyone benefits. That's a big part of what Fila Gasulafia is all about. She's a huge advocate for, you know, LGBTQ rights in Malaysia. Right. And what I found really interesting about her story was like she's not just focused on people being accepting. She's talking about actual systemic change, you know? Wow. Like, she points out how there are all these government programs, but sometimes they actually exclude, you know, certain groups, marginalized groups. And so she's pushing for policies that are truly inclusive. I see. I see. Well, you know, what the log is doing really makes us think about the bigger picture, you know? For sure. It's not enough to just, like, scratch the surface. We have to look deeper. Yeah. And really understand... What's preventing people from being treated equally? It's about constantly questioning, like, is this actually working the way it should be working? Exactly. And, you know, that's where education comes in. That's right. The book talks about, like, some really interesting approaches to this. Like, there's this one woman, Cecilia Susai. Yeah. She came up with this really cool way to deal with, you know, disciplinary problems in schools. Interesting. She gets the families directly involved. Oh, wow. I like that. Yeah. And it makes sense when you think about it. Because how a kid behaves in school, it often comes down to what's going on at home, right? Yeah, absolutely. So by kind of like bridging that gap between the school and the family, she's creating a more supportive environment 
for everyone. I love that. It's a really holistic way of looking at it. Totally. And then you've got Tamarai. It's an organization in Penang. And they're all about breaking those cycles of poverty. Okay. And they do it by empowering, you know, the B40 community through things like entrepreneurship and skills training. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the founder, K.S. Pakilakshmi Subramaniam, she gets it. She understands that education it's not just about, you know, memorizing facts and stuff. It's yeah. about giving people the skills to actually create their own opportunities. I think what ties these stories together, both Cecilia and Tamarai, is this idea that, you know, one size doesn't fit all. Yeah. Especially with education. It has to be about figuring out what a community needs and then giving them the tools to thrive. You know, it's easy to talk about like innovative education and stuff, right. but it's way cooler to actually, you know, see it happening. Mm -hmm. And the book has this great story about this teacher, Ashadwe Panir Selvam. She's in Langkawi. Okay. And so like when the pandemic hit and schools closed, you know, yeah. <laughs> she didn't just give up. You know what I mean? Right. Like she went all in on online learning. Wow. Used all these digital tools and stuff to make sure her students didn't fall behind. That's amazing. You know, I think Ashadwi's story, it just shows how important it is to be flexible and like roll with the punches. Totally. Especially when it comes to the SDGs, right? Yeah. Like we have to be willing to try new things. Exactly. Exactly. And speaking of challenging, you know, how things are usually done, the book also talks about this organization. It's called Concerned UM Indian Graduates. Okay. QMIG, for short. QMIG, okay. And they're really focused on, you know, how there are all these financial obstacles that can prevent Indian youth from going to, like, university. Yeah, that's a huge issue. And I think what QMIG is doing, it really highlights how important it is to make sure everyone has the same opportunities when it comes to education. Right, right. It's like, are we really giving everyone a fair shot or are we like accidentally leaving some people behind? Exactly. Yeah. It's something we should all be thinking about. For sure. Okay, and for our last story, the book brings us back to the environment. You know, that whole thing about sustainability. Mm -hmm. I was super interested in this story about these two people, Roslina Ismail and Norzatul Ifa Hussein. Okay. So they teamed up with farmers in Terengganu. Cool. And they were trying to find ways to deal with like climate change yeah. and, you know, just not having enough resources, that kind of thing. You know what I find so inspiring about that story is that it's all about working together. Right. right? Yeah. Like Roswina and Norza Tool, they didn't act like they knew everything. They actually listened to the farmers, learned from their experiences, yeah. and they took that knowledge and combined it with, you know, newer ways of doing things. Right. It shows you that we can achieve so much more when we, like, work together and share what we know. It really ties everything together, you know? Like, we can't just focus on one SDG at a time. They're all connected. Exactly. It's like each person, each community is like a piece of this giant puzzle. And when we all do our part, we can create a better future for everybody. That's such a good way to put it, honestly. You know, this book, Everyday SDG Narratives from the Ground, it really shows you that even with all the, you know, challenges in the world, there's always hope and there's always someone out there who's trying to make things better. Absolutely. It's yeah. inspiring. It's so inspiring. And, you know, to, to everyone listening, we want to leave you with this. What's one small thing you can do today to make a difference? It doesn't have to be huge. Just something, some little spark of inspiration that you can take from these stories and carry with you. It all starts with that first step. Yeah. You got this. <laughs>